yes, now we can see it. Importance of uh, revelations in financial statements. So yes, we're going to do this as fast as possible. Well, just to make some awareness, but I try to cover all the notes. But there is an example report presented by Pedro as an example. But I'm going to say that my experience is that each client should take this as a guideline, but it is not applicable to all companies. And sometimes it is not good that they use this as a standard because each company has its own particular situation. This is just a guideline, and my experience is Yes, I use a guideline as a guide with financial statements with accuracy. And then I take the notes that are applicable to the company as a guideline. And then we can see a lot of variations on how you write one or a different thing. But if we go to the stock market and take the five best companies, inventories items are very similar, how we estimate accounts receivable. They say more or less the same in a different wording. But each company has different or specific things. How sub accounts are classified and each company has its own style. They have uh, the most important customers, SMEs. That's the first insight. And why the disclosures? I think that the future accountant will work on this because financial statements, balances, cash flow, all those are done in an automated manner. I have seen that auditors, when they want to review financial statements, they do that by a software. They do not need a person. They just put the balance mapped, and they have the results. So on the long term, this is going to be the rule. So what do we have? Disclosures. And a computer will not work with this. They can make some notes standards, as I said. But the responsibility of financial statements or the reviewer will have to make an interpretation. And they have to be understandable. Because what we need to see is that if we have financial statements and we deliver them, it's because we are responsible. And then the board of directors comes so we can explain. And then they start asking questions. And they ask, going to have the same arguments. We should be prepared that financial statements, what we are revealing, are backed off, and we have all the charts to back them off. I have faced different bros. Then the auditors come and start asking. And they say, you need to see this relative importance. You have not seen this well, etc. But let's see these closures. They are related to notes. And also disclosures that are important, they show some explanations that are quantifiable, or for those that are not quantifiable, like risks. They are not quantifiable, but you need to explain them. And I have seen financial statements that are not disclosing risks. What are the risks of a company, how they manage them? 
they have risks, which are the implicit risks and how they manage that. They also have inventories, how they manage obsolescence. This is a risk. How they manage exchange rate if they have foreign currencies, do they have any hedge to prevent any problem from happening? So there should be notes with all the risks and also their management, not only a bad account estimates you need to study customers. We have important customers or not. These closures become the usefulness of any balance. If there are no notes, for me it is useless because it does not contain the information that I mentioned before. And how did you appraise that inventory? When we review the policy, it means that the company says, I'm using the standard method. That's wrong. You cannot do it that way. And this happens when you start reviewing policies, which is the policy. It is standard. The standard is only a guideline, but it is not an appraisal method. And we can see this account by account, and then with uh, receivables, those that are longer than 90 days, no. You need to see risks uh, as well and how you are facing them. So disclosures or notes are the most important thing that we can do as professionals. The balance can be drawn by a software. And there's a colleague that handles the S software. And probably he does not that do that. Probably he just goes with his assistant and ask, asks for help. But notes are different. There you can act. So please, Sergio, let me know five minutes before. So I'm going to give some examples of some notes that I have just prepared recently. This is information for investors. The important thing about financial statements, it's because they're going to go out from the company. For internal purposes, there is no need to get into all this because the company the controller, director, administrators have access to all the information of the company. They are at home. They know which are creditors' risks. They can have them in an Excel or PowerPoint. So internally, there are no information issues. So we need to be in the shoes of an external party, banks, investors, that do not have access to the company information. And they want to invest. So financial statements are going to be interpreted whether they invest or not, or they provide a loan or not based on these financial statements. If it is a small amount, probably just with a balance, they would do it. But if you are talking about big amounts, if they are going to put their patrimony on the hands of a company, they want to know how this company is managed, policies, and also economic purpose. And sometimes they put the activity of the incorporation date, exports or whatever. Well, that's what the incorporation says. But you need to be more precise what they do, the company manufactures and sells 
uh, food for animals, let's say. These results that you see in the PNL are the result of this activity. And not only the legal purpose of the company, we need to study all this. Notes are really, really important. If we're not with these notes, we cannot understand financial statements, and therefore they are not useful. And now, continuing with the dissemination of the information that was not clearly reflected. Financial statements, as I said, by themselves are not enough. And notes or disclosures will extend the horizon to make wise decisions. Therefore, regulations for SMEs or any other regulation say that notes are part of financial statements. We cannot say that P&L balances are. Notes are part of financial statements. We cannot say that only the financial statements are enough. Now, talking about notes, it doesn't mean that we're going to put cash, investment to the short term, I put a AR and a note there. No, this is not notes. Yes, they are notes, but just related to the balance to make it more understandable. Those are particular account notes. What I mean by notes, it's disclosures. What I shall disclose as Pedro mentioned, risks, if there were important events, how I prepare my financial statements based on IFRS or currency, all significant guidelines and policies, only significant policies that help to understand financial statements on how we made a appraisal, also fixed assets. If we are also making an appraisal based on asset deterioration and also labor obligations, policies that are significant and not trivial policies saying that the account is worthless. Sometimes labor liabilities have a lot of turnover, and probably it only represents 0.05%, but then the note takes half a page. And then actually studies, probably it's too low. I can mention that there's a high labor turnover that helps. But that's it. A financial statement is not useful if you do not have backup documentation to understand them. So financial statements are not useful if they do not have enough information to understand them. Then, as I said, they should have notes. This is a summary of different chapters. In those companies that I have studied, they are typically there. The activity of the company, and as I said, which kind of operations are done by the company, and this has to be linked. Main activities generating this revenue. Sometimes you can also include if they have exports, how much they represent, and if they sell most of that part, related parties, if they are exported, we are trying to inform the investor on what the company is. Their activities are these, manufacturers, 
what they sell. Let's say that an important part is exported. Besides, this company is controlled by another company. And this information is giving you a scenario of what you are dealing with. That's important. And there should be another chapter of compliance. These financial statements are based on the international accepted regulations. And then we say the base, if they are consolidated, non-consolidated, separated, exchange rate, And as Sergio mentioned, functional currency, if there was a conversion or not. And then the summary of significant accounting policies. Not all of them the most significant. Those that are necessary to understand and interpret the financial statement or the PNL. So they are only policies. It is not important to mention here that cash is made up by this. And I see sometimes this. You lose the idea. Here you have policies. Which are they? A person was telling me, I do not have any obsoletes. Why do I have to have the obsoletes if you do not have obsoletes, at least the reader will know that you have a policy in place. Because otherwise, they can think that you do not have a policy in place. And if you do not have a reserve, is because you complied with the policy, but it turned out to be zero. So it is important to understand that policies are there so you can make a good interpretation of the rest. A company that does not have obsoletes, you may wonder why they are not there. And then if they have obsoletes, how you determined? How was your criterion based on what? And you need to make a note of that so you can go have a good interpretation on what the company is doing to make sure about this obsolescence policy. And here you have related information to items, AR, AP, and some people put it at the beginning, some others at the end. Disclosures, contingent liabilities and commitments. This is the most important. There are some contingent liabilities, some uh, lawsuits, problems with the authorities. There is a regulation talking about that. We should consider whether we recognize if there is a liability due to a contingency, which are the commitments in place. And as I said, that regulation that changed uh, I have the commitment to sell a product that became too costly. And I do have some other commitments, uh, financial information disclosures. Why it is in red here, we will see how it is understood. There should be a note talking about the risks of the company and not only uh, not saying the company manages risks because the board of directors get together and that's it. No, you need to have more information about that exchange rate, how the company manages this risk. And this can change every year. There would be some years when the company has uh, some coverage and some others not. But we need to say that those years that the company hires this hedge or coverage, then the company has these liabilities in dollars, giving that effect of 
liability asset and it is covered by a hedge or it is not covered because the company considers that there will not be important effects in the following months and then you write it down I have these dollars and these liabilities if there was an effect of the exchange rate the effect would be this so you pointed out not every company does that to make it clear it doesn't matter if there is a devaluation of dollars of 10 percent the effect would be as such and so on exchange rate also in bad accounts in credits which is the policy the company surveys customer by customer monitoring every month or every six months uh, warranty 50 percent of the AR is in one or two customers it is an important significant customer but not a related party so related parties are not here you can have 100 percent in a related party this is not a risk we're talking about third party risks so credits what I do is to mention the policy to grant credit how you manage it and how you make your reserve how you notified they've told me those that are higher 90 days no this is when you acknowledge the revenue you have a potential of risk and you need to assume it and you need to quantify it and then in the note you're going to put it I have customers for 30 days and I have a 1% reserve uh, 90 days 2% and so on so it is useful to say how the company is assuming these risks then you take into account liabilities liquidity companies debt how you manage the interest rates if they are variable if they are fixed if they are variable how you're managing them do you have any coverage and also cash flow coverage coverage for them and how you are considering forecasts for next months this is really important for shareholders auditors this is the most important note for me at the end you have the consolidation controllership if there's one as a note how are we doing with time one question Juan Carlos yes I can hear you good do you consider that in the disclosure notes you should disclose whether the company has or doesn't have the assembly minutes I have some conflicts with my auditing teams as they do not have any minutes and from the point of view of corporations we disclose with that note but this has been a controversial topic because they don't want this to be disclosed this is related to financial risks and this note is related to the incorporation of a company it is the activity those public companies say that this company was incorporated according to the Mexican laws and they say that it was incorporated in this year so this is not like a facade company and there 
you can make a note that they have not formalized their incorporation. You need to be subtle. The company has not made its incorporation. Could be harsh. Well, this is minutes. I'm talking about dividends and also ordinary assembly commissary reports, etc. Well, probably I can say then you can put that at the end where you can see commitments and contingency. And you can say the company has not formalized some events and you should have the opinion of the legal department and this may cause some issues with shareholders or X. But I would put it as a contingency. It doesn't affect the operation of the company. I think that the company can continue its operation as normal, uh, as usual. But there's a contingency of a kind of formality. But here, where we need to focus on, it is not we will not include the risks that have to do with the uh, Treasury uh, Authority. This is another kind of risk. We're talking about fin financial risk, FX rates, and why? It is not that I'm saying that this should be. This is what the standards uh, state. So what are the risks that ha I have uh, in interest rates, FX rate of products market, if it's a steel product or a lanimum uh, product, which increases or decreases, and if it's the steel has maintained its price, and the steel is very volatile in the past few years, or so tell me what's your coverage. This is in the sense of anal financial analysis. It is no longer to like uh, being accountants, we are more uh, financial uh, professionals. Well, Juan Carlos San Francisco, this is Hector Rubio. What I see or how I manage the situation, I don't know if this is the right thing. It's by the report of uh, recommendations and uh, Informations. According to my experience, normally the clients do not accept this kind of uh, uh, disclosures. Uh, it, more, if it, they are for fiscal issues, they do not let you to include them. Well, well, the thing is, Hector, is I fully agree with you. Yes, we have a lot of we struggle with the clients, but don't forget that the reason of the financial information standard is not to be uh, compliant with the uh, well to be uh, friendly with the client. It is for the exterior. We are putting our signature. If we put our signature, it is not that the, to make the customer happy. It's because they, it has to comply with the financial information standards. Well, I'm sorry for the interruption. Well, well, what Francisco is referring to is that we we have a regulating entity, so. Ev everything has has well, have be has to be supported by a minute. If not, we manage it as a contingency, as an internal control. You just give the recommendation. It is very important to disclose this. Any movement in the w patrimonial or wealth uh, situation, I I don't. Well, here, this is where the experience comes in. Well, we, ne we need to take into account, it is not that we would like to be very uh, purist, but the important thing of the PNL statement, that's why we are independent. We're not to be compla complacent with the client. Well, we need to provide the service to the client, but please do not ask me to do different things besides the disclosure of your P&L statements. The note has to be stated in a way that a reader uh, can understand it. It is not like to make accusations. One thing is to say the company has not formalized certain events that might imply 
uh, formality, and and that's it. But you are telling this that it is not. We are not telling everything, but there's an event of informality in the assembly minute. With this, you are saying that there's an event that is taken into account. If I'm telling you that is not significant, if I'm telling you that is not a salvity, so you an exception you can interpret it because the risk of an investor well has to have the capacity of reading the P and L state statement and be able to read the small letters. Well as a final comment and to avoid any interruptions. We just put this note when we see that there's an impact in wealth movement like payment of dividends or there was an increase of variable capital or issues or topics that may have a financial impact. So because normally if the entity did not have anything we re we re in the auditing, the, it did not pay fees to the board of directors or dividends, the, uh, the minute has to be formalized, but it doesn't have a financial implication. But if it did all those movements, like increasing of the capital, he sold uh, shares, and there's no minutes. So this has a very important implication uh, financial-wise. So that's why we put this note, but we fully agree that there's a financial implication. We need to disclose it in a more diplomatic way, because it is not an accusation that the reader can immediately take this point and to discredit the validity of the financial statement. It depends on the criterion. So if we can disclose this, what is important, that's OK. That is a risk that it can totally change the idea of what you are reading. Well, we disclose it and we put something in detail. This is our responsibility. It is not uh, other things. Well, secondly, if it's not relevant, and I think if there's, an, uh, if there's no a minute of a dividend and the dividend was already paid and the shareholders uh, were, well, agreed upon this, if I consult this with a lawyer and this implies that the company that uh, files a lawsuit and the people that lend money can request their money immediately, if there's no, uh, uh, I do not suggest to include a note because it will make noise and it will be very confusing. But if when we put something in notes, it's because they, they are important. It's like a warning. Yes, one more minute to conclude. Everything has consequences. Everything that we put in the disclosures uh, are, is relevant. So we have to be very careful. What we include in the note is because they are very, they transcend. Well, because if we include something that is not relevant in the notes, that will create confusion. So I have to draft the notes pretty well. Anything causes noise when it comes to PML statements, not only for the tax authorities. Well, we have to assess. If the PLNL will be used by investors, or normally they will, they are just uh, in the drawer. So, if if the statements are used by the company for the suppliers, or there, we're talking about in big amounts of risk. So I might as well include it in the notes. But the PLNL statements are done for the corporate, and they consolidate or whatever, so I can accept uh, some risks. So it's it's uh, common sense or judgmental. So some final words. If it's possible, those are the notes, uh, all the subsequent facts. 
I don't know if I, c I have time to put an example. You only have two minutes. Well, this is an example of what I have just prepared. So those are activities that the company do not have staff, does not have staff. It's done by a related party, events that are important, changes and policies that are relevant. What changed? It because the company had to adopt those standards because they are in force. So the that has to be considered and what are the effects. I put all the modifications. No, we we do not see your presentation. We uh, we do not see the example in the screen. Can you see it? it the, it's very, we cannot uh, see it very well. OK, if you, well, as I said, those are activities. This company processes uh, pre, uh, nutritional premixes. The company has staff that is outsourced. There were changes in policies. What are what I had to adopt because the standards uh, request the company to adopt, adapt it. So I have to say how this affected. And then we put a disclosure. They did not have an impact in the financial statements. So. OK, annual enhancements, financial instruments. Those are the enhancements that we were referring to. And this is a summary of the accounting policies. Declaration of compliance. The, this is a, a corporation of variable capital established in Mexico with a, the business address, the I. IFRS were applied for the first time. And here what I was, what Sergio was referring to, because the first financial statements under IFRS, I have a consistent, consistently apply the accounting policies used in the preparation of the financial statements according to IFRS 1. In the note 18, I reveal the impact of the transition towards the IFRS. Then is the preparation basis using the local currency of the transactions that took place in US dollars, all the assets valued Net level one, two, and three, the base of non-consolidated financial statements, they were not consolidated for internal purposes, the participation method, everything that is necessary to understand what we are disclosing in the balance, how the cash flow statements is, uh, are presented. It could be an indirect method, the use of estimations, there are estimations that can vary. So up to here, this is a case where the estimations well, are interesting, where the estimations are more or less reasonable. There's nothing to add. But when it comes to estimations that, that the estimations cannot be estimated properly, and there are very different hypotheses. We have to disclose more estimations on this. We estimate it based on this. However, is sensitive to the change according to events that will present afterwards. Financial instruments, everything 
that are, is related, how they are classified, uh, the, and we give an example. This, uh, these are policies. I cannot go into detail. Those are policies. And then we go to the every item, the receivables, cash. Uh, this is an analysis, uh, this part of the balance sheet, sheet investment. But the most interesting note that was really difficult to obtain is the, what, uh, the risks. So everything is like uh, besides the accounting, the accrual of interest, the fiscal reforms. And here the note is about how the assets are classified. Cash, reasonable value, uh, uh, receivables, how it's amortized cost. This is what the no standard request. So I break down all the valuation of each of the items that are part of the financial statements. So the amortized cost is a historical cost, etc. Then uh, now we, this is the risk administration or management is a credit risk, liquidity risk, FX risk, interest rate risk, and the risk management process includes the following, identify, evaluate, and monitor external and internal risks that could significantly impact the company, prioritization of risk, etc. And here we're talking about each one of them. Management of credit risk is a financial loss that the company faces and then we explain how the company does this. It's the all the expected losses based on the PCE model. It it was it increased to thirty three million and twenty eight million when we talk about the accrual for credit losses. Okay, uh, Professor uh, Juan Carlos. Well, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much, and I'm sorry for being so fast.